As we wrap up our project here on Boathouse Row in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, we just want to remind you that whether you're looking for a ductless project for a home, office, commercial, residential, a Mitsubishi ductless system can handle it all. Our goal was to maintain the integrity of this historic building while providing a new, efficient system to keep the rowers cool during the hot Philly summers. We did this by replacing all the indoor units with new Mitsubishi ductless air handlers. We then ran shorter line sets to the outdoor units to ensure each room would receive proper cooling. Next, we moved the outdoor units to the opposite side of the building and mounted them up high to keep them out of the way in the event of future flooding. The variable speed compressors in these new units will provide more precise cooling and keep both the members and their guests more comfortable. Finally, we painted the previously white line high to match the blue paint on the walls. This little touch will help them blend in better so that visitors can focus on the memorabilia, trophies, and paintings that keep history front and center. Yeah, we're at Fairmount Rowing Association, and we uh, is a completely volunteer organization. I have about 150 members, give or take, that we maintain on a regular basis. What is now Fairmount Rowing Association is uh, a combination of two clubs. The original club, 1858, it was the Quaker City Rowing Club. This back wall here, you can see how thick these doorways are. These doorways, that was the back wall of Fairmount Rowing Association. So Fairmount was formed in 1877. About 40 years ago, Quaker City fell on hard times. Fairmount purchased Quaker City and then built this bar area that we're in. The uh, members actually built it to combine the two. Quaker City Rowing Club was there. This bay didn't exist. And then from the, the brick building, that was Fairmount Rowing Association. So we're talking hundreds of years, this was all here, and you have a, a once in 200 yeah. year flood yeah. that does all this damage. Yeah. Quaker City was always that front gate where we walked in the front door, and that's a pretty neat looking front door. That's the, uh, that is the original front door still too, wow. from 1850. These windows up in the Carlin room, uh, six by nine over panes. Uh, they're the same windows. They're from 1877. Fairmount's a very, for the most part, a very blue collar club. Uh, and it always has been. Uh, when it was first started, most of the guys were in walking distance of the house. They lived up in the Fairmount area. And a lot of us still do. Uh, but we have guys that have moved out. But it just, it just, it's a nice group of people here. We talked about uh, Olympians, Jimmy Castellan. He was on the Olympic team. I, th I think accurately, he never actually took a stroke in the Olympics. He was a uh, sub. But he remains very active today in indoor rowing. We have these Concept 2 ergometers, and that's a worldwide competition. They have a championship every year in Boston, the Crash Bees. The coveted trophy of the Crash Bees is a hammer and Jimmy wins it every year. John Kiefer was the driving force behind creating the bar room. Oh, really? Yeah, we dedicated the, uh, the room a couple years ago to his memory. They owned Kiefer Appliances. Okay, <laughs> go figure. <laughs> There's uh, Mr. Kiefer rowing into his 90s. <laughs> That's awesome. They're over in the Czech Republic. Wow, <laughs> lots of history. That woman's picture lower right, that's Teresa Bell. She, like I say, she was 92 Olympics. The guy in the center there, very colorful, is Sean Dre. He's an Olympian, just went back to Ireland. So looking also, you guys have a very long list of uh, yeah, so, service as well. Yes, too. so it, they're kind of neat. That was uh, World War II. We found that in the uh, knee walls up there. So somebody made that, and there were three members there who uh, lost their lives in uh, World War II. We did some uh, work and we found all the World War I members. Oh, wow. So I had the plaque made. And then the plaque to the right is World War, beyond World War II, is Korean War, uh, Afghanistan, Iraq, Vietnam. That's awesome. And then looking behind it at the two stained glass windows. Yeah, so when they made the addition, somebody came up with those too. So that represents the, uh, the Quaker City and the uh, Fairmount. It's really cool. And we run a, uh, you know, I got the shirt on for, <laughs> for the Quaker City. We run this Quaker City regatta. I think it's the first Sunday in August, which is a master's regatta uh, here. We've been doing it for about 20 years now. This was that portico 
on the downriver side of the building. So where we're hanging those air conditioner yes. units now, that was the original entrance. There's the portico. Now it's sort of like you just walk by that, but you know, in years past, that was the showcase. Here's a picture of the ballroom. That's where the bulk of the air conditioners are. And you can see there those big doorways that we're pointing out. These are prior to those doorways because this was Fairmount at that point. You know, it, it didn't uh, join with Quaker City. So that was prior to the merging together? Yes. That wow. was uh, 1939. These are the historic boathouse row lights that everybody sees from uh, the Schuylkill Expressway. They used to be incandescent lights. There was a guy here before from Pico, and that's all he did was just start here and replace bulbs and go. So years ago, they, um, Pico did a fundraise and people contributed and we changed them to LED lights. Now they do, they can do a whole lot more now. They can change color, they can add, make it look like gingerbread, it, it, animation they can do, it's, it's, it's pretty it's neat. Awesome. They don't really use that as much as they can, but they do have- So do you guys control this or is it all no, automatic? No, there's through? actually a computer in um, Lloyd Hall in the recreation center. They get contacted, I guess from somebody at City Hall and if people want to change it for whatever reason, you can pay. If the Eagles are coming, they'll put them green, you know, breast cancer awareness, we'll have that kind of stuff. I actually shut these off one time by mistake, and they had guys looking all over, like why they were off. They couldn't, they couldn't figure out. We had some electrical work going on here one time, and the lights were out for about a month, and nobody could figure out what was going on. And finally I came down here and hit this switch. <laughs> and they all, so now I wrote it very officially, do not shut off. <laughs> <laughs>Thanks for tuning in to this episode of ECI's YouTube channel. If you liked what you saw, would like to follow up with this project or see our projects in the future, please click to like, subscribe, and follow our channel. See you soon.